I'm going to hook up what's called a remote start button. And the idea is that when I want to crank the engine over, I hit this button and the engine will crank. Now on a Ford, if I have the ignition turned off, the primary ignition will be sent battery voltage through this ignition wire. So this clip I'm going to put over so it hits this nut on the terminal for the I terminal. So that as I'm spinning the engine over, it will send full battery voltage through the primary ignition circuit into the distributor where I connect this to the positive side of the battery. When I tell this thing to crank over, it'll crank over. And even though it's gonna to try to start, it won't. Because I've taken the ignition rotor out of the distributor. It's not there, so nothing there can fire spark to the spark plugs. But because I'll be getting current through the I terminal into the primary circuit, I will get a reading on my draw meter, which is what I am after. When I was cranking this earlier, it was throwing 38 to 39 degrees of dwell. I want 24 to 28 degrees. So I'm going to crank it now just to get a baseline where it's at. About 40 degrees. So I'm going to adjust the ignition points until they show 36 degrees when I crank it over. After that, I have to reset the ignition timing because every two degrees of dwell I adjust, it changes the ignition timing by one degree. Once I'm done with that, I then need to make sure that the idle speed on the carburetor is correct with the throttle position solenoid engaged. If it is too high or too low, I'll adjust it. I probably don't need to make any adjustments to the idle speed mixture, idle screw mixtures um, for air fuel, simply because the idle screw air fuel mixture is not going to be that different with the tiny adjustments and how far the throttle blades are open. I'll see how it feels. In order to decrease the dwell angle, I need to make the points open sooner than close sooner than they are now. The way I do that is I adjust the point gap. There are two screws needed to be used to accomplish that. The first one is that the anchor screw for the ignition points. And that is really hard for me to see with my eyes so the way they are. I just barely crack it semi-loose, semi-tight. The other screw is a bit harder to see, but right down here, there's the other screw, and I'm gonna loosen that just a little bit. If I loosen it too much, the points will try to close up by themselves under spring pressure, and I don't want that. And then to adjust it, there's a little adjusting slot in the points where I can come in here and just slightly kiss that. I barely touched it. I'm going to tighten it back down and see where the drill angle is during cranking. Once I hit about 36 degrees, I'm going to stop. You're not in the screw. There. Okay. Do you want me to push that button? 
Right. Are you going to do it and I'll go over here? Okay, let me get closer to the... Okay, cranking. Went down to 23-ish. Okay, so that is 2 moving 12 and points are opening too far. There. Windsor. The timing mark blade is painted white and it is the straight edge that is used to align to the timing mark indicators on the harmonic balancer. In this photograph you can see the direction the engine rotates as you face the engine looking to the front of the car it turns in a clockwise rotation. I also show where the harmonic bouncer has been painted. The long white line is zero degrees before top dead center. The shorter painted line is four degrees before top dead center. Unpainted, it shows where the 10 degree mark is located. After we set the ignition points and the dwell from 38 or 39 degrees down to 30, that's a difference of about 6 degrees, so that represents a 3 degree over advancing or further advancing of the ignition timing. So what I did is last year or so, on the harmonic balancer of the engine where the tummy marks are, I marked a long white line at zero degrees and a short line at six degrees because this engine calls for six degrees of timing before top dead center at idle. So what we did off camera is I had learned to start the engine after I hooked up the timing light. And when the timing light was flashing, when number one soda was firing, I pointed it down to the timer, the timing mark, where there's a flat edge of the timing mark indicator. And as a strobe flash, I could see where the mark was on the harmonic balancer. So I electronically adjusted the timing until the gauge lined up at the zero degree mark. I looked to see how many degrees I moved it electronically. I moved it seven degrees. So it is now set for seven degrees before top dead center which is within one degree of specification, and that's perfectly fine. These little Ford small block engines don't usually start to wake up until they're about 12 degrees before top dead center for ignition timing, but that has an adverse impact on emissions, nitrous oxides mostly, and it can also cause the engine to ping, especially with a low octane non-ethanol fuel like we use for this car. So as much as I'd love to set it for 10, 11 or 12 degrees before top dead center, I resisted. It's a seven degrees now, I'm gonna leave it alone. It's a perfectly good idle uh, um, timing mark. The idle speed is fine where it is right now. So I'm gonna leave that alone also. So I'm gonna put this all together and call it the day. And of course, many thanks to Linda for her patience and help. Cut.